Another interesting aspect of Photoshop that's sort of new uh, to Photoshop CS5 users uh, and to those of you who haven't used Photoshop before um, are these little tabs. Um, they, they show up a lot on the PC, but on the Mac these are sort of new. Um, I also previously told you how you could separate the two images. But what if I want to work with the two images one side by side? In the old version of Photoshop, you actually had to separate them out into two different panels. But if I want to see both of the images in the same panel, I just go up to Window on the menu. Notice this is the menu bar. Go up to Window and go to Arrange. And now you see a whole bunch of different choices that we have here um, in the Arrange menu which we never had before. If I did two up vertical, right there, you see the little icon. It has two panels side by side. And let's see what happens if I choose that. Now, the active apple orange juice bottle, um, the active file, you can tell it's the active file two ways. Number one, uh, it's brighter. Its title is brighter. The old image title is grayed out. Number two, if I look over in the layers palette, that is the active file that I'm working on. Conversely, if I click on the old man image, that image now becomes the image inside the layers palette, which is down here. That's the active file that I'm working on. Two ways we can see. Number one, we see the layer in Photoshop down here in the layers palette. And number two, we notice that the title is lighter. So that's, way, that's a way to work two images both together. If I want to um, merge the two images back together again, I could take that image again, drag it over to this one until I see that blue line just like before, and now I'm watching and looking at one file at a time. So I can go ahead and choose two up vertically, view, uh, I'm sorry, window, arrange, uh, tile all horizontally, this is two up horizontal. Maybe you're working on two landscapes. You have one image with a totally separate scroll bar on top of the other image with a totally separate scroll bar. Again, the same thing works. This is the old man. The old image is now in the layers palette. Its title is brighter. The orange juice bottle now is brighter because I just chose it and its image is here. If I want to merge them back together, I can take them, look for that bright blue border, drop it, and now we're back to normal. Now Photoshop has these panels. Right now, if I look over here at the layers palette, I see that the layers uh, name is bright, which I'm, I'm in the layers palette. I have a layer that's chosen, and that represents the file that I'm working on. If I click the next tab over, I see channels. Channels looks dangerously like the Layers palette, so you have to watch out for the Channels palette. Sometimes I take the Channels palette, palette out and I close that or minimize it. If you click on the double arrows, it'll expand and contract. The arrow, see how the arrows are pointing uh, to the left? That will collapse it. The arrows pointing, the little diamonds, uh, sorry, triangles pointing to the right will expand it. And the X will uh, close it. It doesn't disappear forever, but it does um, get out of your way. I always recommend, especially you guys in the beginning, to please uh, go ahead and close that channel's palette. It looks dangerously like the layers palette, so um, once we get multiple layers, you might get mixed up. The next one over is the paths palette, which we're not really going to be working with, um, too often so uh, in the beginning. So let's take that out also too and I'm going to go ahead and close that paths. So now I have a nice little neat layers palette here. There's no other tabs there. There's nothing else that I need to look at. Um, I can go ahead and uh, look at these little drop down menus for each of these uh, palettes that come out. These are some adjustments that we're going to be working with. If I t click on the styles you'll see all the different styles. I'm going to take the styles out and I'm going to close that panel too because we definitely don't need the styles. I'm going to go ahead and close that. So now I have adjustments here. I have my layers palette here. Here's my color palette that has sliders that I can change the color. And what we're going to be using in the beginning is this tab, 
which is swatches. And Photoshop does a nice job of bundling these palettes together. So we're going to leave those two because they kind of make a little bit a little bit of sense. Alrighty, and there are some smaller um, uh, panels right here. If I like to look at those, I can expand them. I have my history uh, palette, and I have my properties tab, and I have my character palette. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So I can go ahead, I can expand that out, or look, I can click up here at this little button, and I can go ahead and collapse those. So what I've done essentially is I've sort of changed that workspace um, uh, so that I, it's more custom to, to what it is that I need to do. Let's turn that off. Um, if I come over here to my toolbar, which is where all our tools are, I see that I have uh, the same set of double triangles, and I can move that. I can have a single row of tools, or I can have a double row of tools. Once I choose a tool, I want you to notice up here, once I choose a tool, for example, the first tool here, if I hover over it, it will tell me that that's the re rectangular marquee tool, and will also tell me, in parentheses, what the shortcut letter is. For example, if I hover over the Move tool, I notice parentheses, there's the letter V. If I hover over the Marquee tool, I notice, in parentheses, there's the letter M. And that's a really good hint and a really good way to learn those shortcuts that we were talking about before really easily. If I go ahead and click on the letter V on my keyboard, I notice that I, it switches automatically to the Move tool because that's the shortcut key. If I click on the letter M for the Marquee tool, I don't have to click on the letter M on the keyboard. I mean, I don't have to come up to the toolbar while I'm working. I don't have to interrupt my flow. I can go ahead and just click that shortcut letter. And if I come down to the paintbrush, which is down here, you notice that very sensibly the paintbrush tool is the letter B. Every time I change my tools, if I go to the marquee tool, I have what's, a, what's called up here an options bar. So if I say to you in class, go up to the options bar and change something on the options. What that means is you'll tell Photoshop to change something about the way the tool is working. So that's a good way to learn all those shortcuts. So M for the Marquee tool, V goes to the Move tool. As I go up and I look at the Options bar, which is that bar that goes all the way across the top, right underneath the menu, you'll see that it'll change. If I go L, this is called the Lasso tool, the letter L, it's going to change to the Lasso tool, and I'm going to see all the choices that I have to make with the Lasso tool up here on the Options bar. B again is paintbrush. It'll just jump right over to the paintbrush. S for rubber stamp. It'll give me all of the options for the rubber stamp. And so on and so forth. P is the pen tool. T is the text tool. It'll give me the options for the text tool. So those are all really valuable things to remember while you're working in Photoshop. But what I wanted to show you um, to end this quick little lesson on the Photoshop interface is that you can save this workspace. If you don't save it, Photoshop will just open up to, um, to the default the next time uh, you open up a new file. So we can go ahead and save this workspace and you can go to up to window and workspace, the word workspace, and down in workspace there's the word new workspace. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and I'm going to call this And I'm going to keep that, keep all those panels right where they are. Panel locations will be saved. Keyboard shortcuts and menus are optional. So I'm going to do keyboard shortcuts and menus. I'm going to keep all of those different things. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Nope, oh, the workspace cannot, oh, sorry, it cannot use a period. Okay, there, so then that's saved.